The UK is slowly emerging from lockdown, but in the wake of the pandemic, another healthcare crisis is unravelling. Yeah, according to a group of 47 charities, without urgent action, the UK's cancer death rate could rise for the first time in decades. Today, we're joined by Professor Carol Sikora, a leading world authority on cancer. Morning, Professor Sikora. Good morning, Professor. Morning. So, morning. Uh, we've all been so focused on COVID, understandably, that we've, I guess we've almost half forgotten that there are these ugly, deadly illnesses. They're not going anywhere, like cancer. So um, what do the latest figures suggest and what's your take on them? So it's, there's no doubt it's bad news. Uh, it's getting better. And it started, of course, in, in the first lockdown when the peak in hospital utilisation by people with COVID really soared. And that stopped cancer patients getting access to diagnosis and to treatment. And the worst thing is actually the diagnosis and the delay in diagnosis that we're seeing. And that's still partly there. You know, every day about a thousand people should be diagnosed with cancer. That's a, no seasonality, winter, summer, doesn't matter. A thousand people in Britain are diagnosed with cancer. And we've seen troughs much far fewer than that uh, when COVID. COVID has been peaking in terms of activity. So we've got to change that. We've got to get back to normal. And, you know, lost in the waiting lists that we hear about 5 million people waiting for something are some cancer patients that we haven't actually found. We've got to find them in there. It's, it's not easy, but we've got to get them and get them onto a treatment programme. And you say there's four reasons why the number of people who are diagnosed with cancer is falling. What are those reasons? So the first one is fear, fear to go to the doctor. We don't really understand uh, what makes people have symptoms and then suddenly they say, that's it, I'm calling the doctor. What makes them do that? And clearly during the pandemic, that no one wanted to call any form of health service, uh, anything, GP or hospital. The second one is actually going to, getting from the GP to the hospital. It wasn't that easy. Uh, the third one is the whole diagnostic system broke down because the scanners and so on were used for COVID patients, the doctors were used for COVID patients, uh, and so there was no one to diagnose cancer. And finally, the fourth one is that most cancer patients need an operation. They need to go to an operating theatre, have an anaesthetic to do the first stage of cancer treatment. And that wasn't possible because of COVID. So because the, everything was jammed, all the anaesthetists, for example, were in the intensive care unit. So now we're coming out, it's great, but we've got to put more emphasis, as the charities rightly say, on, on getting cancer diagnosed. That's the key. And then making sure it's treated quickly yeah. and properly. Because like you were saying, there's less biopsies. Less biopsies means less diagnosis. Um, we're always taught that if we spot cancer early, then it can be treated. And I was looking at my notes last night. I couldn't believe that. Nine, there's a 90% cure rate, you're saying, if, yeah. if you can catch it with a, locally, i.e. if it's one organ, right? Absolutely. I mean, the four common cancers are breast, lung, colon and prostate. And they make up about 70% of all cancers. And they're all the same. If they're localised in the organ, we can cure people. Up to 90% of people will be cured of their cancer. If it spreads to the local lymph nodes, it drops a bit. It drops to about 80% in all cases. But if it spreads away from the local lymph nodes, you know, the glands under the armpit for the breast, for example, if it spreads away from those areas, then we're in trouble. The survival drops to about 25%, which is a big drop, 80% down to 25%. And it only takes time. Now, the question is, how long is it going to take? And three to six months is the sort of critical period that allows the cells, the bad cells, the cancer cells, to spread from the primary organ around the body. And once they start spreading, we can still treat it and we can still get cures, but it's much more difficult, requiring more treatment, more chemotherapy, more radiotherapy to do that. And that's the problem. So speed is essential. Professor, um, my mum had lung cancer and I was just wondering, could you help us spot some of the signs of some of the most um, popular, not popular or most common cancers? So what would be the sign uh, if you've got lung cancer? So with lung cancer, it's usually a cough, repeated chest infections, maybe some blood coming out in the sputum. These are the, 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 the symptoms for, for lung cancer. But as you... 
any sort of cancer, the key is progressive symptoms. So it's not just having a sore throat or uh, abdominal pain or a loss of weight, it's the progression of it. You know, every week it get, seems to get worse without getting better. What so anything that persists two weeks, go and see the doctor. What about colon cancer? Colon cancer, blood in the poo, uh, change in uh, things, a bit of diarrhea, a bit of constipation, maybe alternating, some unusual change that's not related to uh, going and sitting in the pub and having a lot of beer one night, but uh, actually just persisting over a week or two a change, then obviously go along, get it sorted out. OK, the next one that you mentioned earlier, uh, the prostate. What should we mean? It says change in urine. In what way? In smell or look or...? Hello. No, it more frequently going to uh, getting up at night to pass urine. <clears throat> As people get older, including myself, you get up at night. That it's a natural habit because the prostate enlarges. It's called be benign prostatic hypertrophy. But sometimes it's due to cancer. So get it checked. It's very simple. Check uh, a PSA test can be done by your GP, and you you can find out what's going on. The most important message to everybody is the health service is open. It's there for you to use. COVID has gone. It was dropped right down at the moment. This is a really good time if you're worried about a persistent symptom, get it sorted. And very quickly, I think it's really important we talk about breast cancer as well. Is that just like spotting when something just doesn't look normal to you? A woman is the best judge of what's going on in the breast. If, if she's worried uh, about a change, a lump or a pain or, or some discomfort or irregularity, again, get it checked out. It's very simple and you'll be given an appointment by your GP and, if necessary, go to a breast clinic. And it can be sorted out very efficiently. I mean, Professor, we could talk to you for hours about this, but I, we have to leave now. But one more question that we just wanted to ask was, what would you like to see now uh, going forward in terms of cancer care? Because there's obviously a time bomb waiting to happen. So how can, not necessarily we fix this, but what can be done to, to mitigate it? I think the, the best thing is to really speed up the waiting times for people that have possible cancer. And there's a whole list of symptoms, you could say. Anybody with these symptoms, they come out of the waiting list and we speed it up and they get the key investigation. It may be a CT scan, an MR scan, or some sort of biopsy, uh, a colonoscopy, for example. So we get the, the critical test done. So we get them out of the waiting list and onto treatment program. That would, would save the most lives over the next six months. Thank you for joining us today. Thank really you, Professor. It. That was so good. Thank you. Get back to it. Wait for us.